Hey everyone, I'm not here to waste your time, so this is the final build that I'll be going over today. I know this is a long video, it's, a, it's another one of those, but I've got a lot to share about the current state of the game and how that affects what items are good and whatnot. However, if you don't have the time for that, if you just want to run with this build, no questions asked, then you can copy this code, which is also in the description box down below, and paste it in the build's search bar, and it will appear right there. It's easier than ever before, you've got all you need with that, and, and now you can't say that I'm dragging out this video for watch time either. But yeah, for all the people that actually want to listen to me talk endlessly about that luck now, let's begin with the video. So yes, it is true, we are back with an updated Abrams guide, because I've been maining Abrams pretty damn hard ever since I made that first guide, even though he's received a lot of nerfs now, and I've been having a lot of success with him still, although a lot has changed since that video. To be fair, uh, I don't think he is as strong or overpowered as he used to be anymore. Abrams does have clear counters, you know, if, if you see a Shiv, an Infernus or a Mirage, maybe don't try to take the 1v1. And the changes to how laning works in Deadlock specifically have damaged his ability to snowball pretty hard as well. Now I know that goes for most heroes, the, the developers over at Valve have made Deadlock less snowbally in general, but since Abrams is the strongest in the early to mid game, part of his strength used to be that he could just, you know, have that early power spike, use it to get a lead, and kind of run the opponents down before they had a chance to recover. And that just isn't possible anymore, really, if you're facing opponents of equal skill at least. And that's the thing as well, you know, players have gotten a lot more playtime now and have gotten a lot better at playing around Abrams 2 uh, these past two months, ever since that first Abrams guide that I made. I've gone through multiple periods of thinking that something is really, really good, then winning a whole bunch of games, then playing against significantly better opponents, only to have to switch things up again, to then thinking that the new thing is really good, to then win even more games, to then end up playing against even better players again and again and again. But now, after all this time, we've put all that learning to good use. We're almost at the top now, to the point where we're regularly getting into games with really good players, the pro players and all that stuff. And we've still been massively successful with Abrams, even in those games. Currently sitting at a 70% win rate in ranked, and about a 61% win rate overall. And, and I know that all of this ranked stuff is, is still early and it doesn't mean too much, but surely I think this all means that we're at least doing something right. And today, I just wanted to share all the things that I learned on this long Abrams journey that I've had and really get to the bottom of how to get the most out of this hero. So, first things first. Before we talk about all the changes to the overall game and the things that affected Abrams the most, it is time that we do a little bit of homework to clear up some confusion about the wall charge stun and the heavy melee. I won't do the whole rundown thing again of reading out all the abilities and what they do and all the upgrades, but the one thing that I've seen a lot of players be confused about, and in some cases even share false information about, is the stun into the heavy melee combo. You see, right after I released that Abrams guide, Valve went ahead and nerfed the duration of the stun time from 1 seconds to 0.85 seconds. People are now stunned for a shorter duration, and so obviously this has affected the window at which you can use a heavy melee safely without the enemy being able to parry. And this can get especially confusing when you pair that up with items such as Duration Extender, which then again extends the duration of that stun, and with items like Deep of Reducer, which reduce the duration of that stun. So let's put an end to that, let's see how it works really. Unlike some people seem to believe, you can still always heavy melee opponents right after the stun. But you can only do so if you hold the melee button before the stun lands. If you wait with pressing the melee button up until after it lands, the enemy will be able to parry because you'll be too late. But again, if you simply hold the melee button before the stun ends, so pretty much as you're running, Abrams will start to charge up melee as soon as possible and you will always be able to land it, regardless of your ping, regardless of anything. Now, if your opponents decide to buy the item debuff reducer or debuff remover, they will get out of the stun a bit faster. 30 or 35 percent and in these cases they will always be able to parry a heavy melee right after the stun so yeah don't even bother with duration extender though things get a little bit tricky i've seen some people say that even if you have duration extender you still get parried and i've seen some people say that no it still works and they're both right kind of 
Something that you probably didn't know is that the heavy melee animation can be ended prematurely if you are in contact with a target. Which means that if enemies are further away from you when you melee them, and when you have to cross that larger distance with your swing, it will also take longer for the melee to make contact. And this is an important detail because that means that if you have duration extender, and if the enemies have debuff remover, you can technically still hit them with the stun heavy melee combo, but only if you're right next to them. The moment that you're just a little bit further away, or if you end up using your melee with a turn or with a twist, which happens sometimes as well, because you can change the direction of your melee mid lunch, so to speak, then there's a good chance you'll end up being parried. Now, with the wall collision and all being a bit wonky at times and a bit of RNG being involved of where enemies will end up after the stun, even though it is technically still possible to pull off the combo with duration extender, there is a real risk involved with that. So here's my advice when it comes to this combo. First of all, if you still really want to go for the stun heavy melee combo, if your opponents have debuff reducer specifically for that combo, which I sometimes still do if I think I can get away with it, if I think I got a good RNG on my stun, my advice is to look directly at the enemy when you melee them. May sound obvious, but that is not always what you do in high level gameplay, I think. And you want to wiggle your mouse as little as possible when you go for the melee. This should give you the shortest distance to your target and gives you the best chance of still landing the combo even if they have debuff reducer or remover. But my real advice is, is to just not heavy melee or miss the heavy melee on purpose to bait out the parry and then go for the melee afterwards. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Vindicta was against me in the beginning and then you came and she just had enough. And with all of that stuff cleared up, let's now talk about some of the other changes to the game in general that have affected Abram specifically since my last video. So running back to the whole laning phase and the whole snowballing topic, in previous patches it was relatively easy for Abrams to simply hop into the solo lane and just win it, usually by the 6 minute mark, simply because of his sustain in the lane and with how easy it was to kill towers, and also to deny souls. This would then usually give him a strong soul lead early on in the game, which would then allow him to start roaming around the map looking for easy picks, and this is where most of his strength came from. He was an early to mid game monster, and good Abrams players would look to push that advantage until deep into the mid game, possibly even use that momentum to outright close out the game before the enemies could really even get started. So what has changed since then, and why is it no longer possible to do this, at least not in the same way? Well quite a lot of things actually. First up, Abrams has received a bunch of nerfs to his general health and his passive, which makes him notably weaker in the early game, and that also makes it a bit more difficult to play as aggressive in the lane. Second up, some of Abrams' strongest lane opponents, like Shiv or Infernus or Lady Geist and even Mirage, they've become very, very popular lately. Usually you will find these heroes in the solo lane, and it also just means that the likeliness of you getting a favorable matchup in the lane is a lot smaller. Additionally, and this is probably the most important change, is that the Guardians have also been buffed significantly. They do a lot more damage to players now, and they take significantly less damage from troopers and players in the early game. They've also been placed further back to the point where you cannot just shoot them from the staircase anymore now. So let's say that even if you have a favorable matchup, it generally just takes a lot longer to win that lane and to take the tower. Which then means it takes a lot more time before you can start roaming around the map, you know, without having to come back to your lane every 30 seconds. And to add to all of that, the map has also been made significantly larger which then makes it a lot more difficult to go for ganks across the map in the first place. So yeah, with all of those changes laid out like that, you can see why some players have been saying that Abram simply isn't that good anymore. And that for everything he tends to do, for every role that he tends to fill within a team, a strong early game laner, a mid game gank character, a late game engager or tank, there's almost always a hero that you can choose that simply does it better. There are better solo laners than Abrams right now. There are better mid-game gankers than Abrams right now. There are better late-game engagers than Abrams right now. Abrams is not really the king of anything anymore. But the one thing he still does is everything. Dynamo has a better engage, but he's kind of not too good in the lane. Lash is a stronger mid-game ganker, but he definitely isn't a stanky late-game. 
And Shiv is a stronger solo laner, but he definitely doesn't have the gank or the engage potential that Abram has. Abrams, in a way, is very much a jack of all trades, master of none. But I think in a solo queue ranked environment, an environment that doesn't have draft, mind you, where your teammates are going to be random, something like that is very valuable. Because he might not be the best at everything, but he can still do it all. So now let's go over each of the stages of the game. The laning phase, the mid game, the end game. And look at how I've adapted my playstyle and my build in order to accommodate for all of these changes. And again, how to get the most out of him. So yeah, we're just going to start with the start, which is laning. And the first big change that we're making here is that instead of prioritizing the solo lane, I've mostly been playing him in the duo lane. I simply think that Abrams performs much better in the duo lane now. This is in part because having a backline teammate with strong poke, like Pocket, Raid, Guy, Stella, Mirage, Paradox, Kelvin, Viscous, or Yamato, all of those can help offset Abrams' super early game weakness a bit, help him out a bit, at least until he gets his full kit online and is able to buy a couple of items, and we'll talk more on that soon. But more important is that now, in the dual lane, if you're winning, as in simply pushing the enemies under their tower, well, you don't necessarily have to kill the Guardian to go do something useful. If you're in the duo lane, Abrams can still go to different lanes to look for ganks, to look for picks, and your teammates can just sit under your tower and take all of the camps in close proximity. By playing in the duo lane, you can completely take away the pressure or the need to take the enemy's Guardian before a certain timer, and you can consistently, every single game if you want to, so long as you're only slightly winning your lane, roam as you used to be able to do before. Use that early to mid game strength that Abrams has to make the life of the opponents a lot more difficult. To complement this idea, this game plan, there are six mandatory items that we always pick up in the lane. We have monster rounds, then melee lifesteal, spirit strike, close quarters, extra stamina, and then sprint boots. Why these six items specifically and not some of the other ones like Headshot Booster or Restorative Shot? Well, let's go through them and I'll explain. First up, Monster Rounds. This has been my first buy item on Abrams since, well, at least for a month now. And I've tried a lot of other stuff. I've messed around with some really weird builds in the past few weeks. I've had a period where I picked Restorative Shot, Extra Regen first. Uh, I've opened with melee lifesteal or close quarters. I've even tried ammo scavenger and extra spirit because extra spirit also comes with regen and maybe it does something for siphon life or the stun. But at the end of the day, I found that monster rounds on Abrams just gives me the most value. Not only does it allow me to kill troopers with my shotgun from much further away, which is helpful because again, Abrams' super early laning game until he gets his full kit is not that good. But Monster Rounds also works extremely well with Abrams' kit and the things he typically likes to do. The 25% damage mitigation from NPCs, for example, that also applies to Guardians. So when you start ganking, when you start trying to dive towers on the other lanes, or maybe on the lane that you're currently on, you're able to dive these towers with a lot more ease without getting chunked down as hard. Don't get me wrong, the Guardians still hurt, you don't want to be sitting underneath them, but most of the time, this item alone does give you the confidence, the insurance that you can go in without instantly getting shredded. Monster Rounds also helps you clear the occasional camps that you'll do when you're rotating, maybe you're invading the enemy jungle to make it harder for their carries to take those jungles early on. And it also makes it much easier to last hit minions with melees because the damage amp on Monster Rounds applies to melees for the full amount. So yes, you're just getting 30% more melee damage versus anything that isn't players. If you've watched my laning guides, you also know that I see laning very much as a game of pressure. To win the lane, you have to apply pressure in some sort of way. Now you can do that by shooting at the opponents, by making them low and just forcing them to retreat. And this is usually what poke heroes are very good at. They will throw their abilities your way and force you to go further back. But Abrams doesn't have a lot of poke. And instead of just trying to force more poke damage onto his shotgun with something like Headshot Booster, I think the better way is to just give Abrams a better lane shove, make sure you can kill the troopers before they can kill the troopers, and then when you've killed all your troopers in the lane, you have a lot more time to shoot at the opponent. And so you'll increase your damage against players simply because you have more opportunities to fight them without losing out on your creeps. Remember, we're not really trying to snowball our lane anymore. We're just trying to force the opponents under their guardian so that we can go roaming for a bit without having them push our towers down. 
The second item is melee lifesteal, and I think that this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, Abrams almost feels naked without this one. He doesn't feel like a real hero. It's just more melee damage, and he really likes the melee. And if you melee a hero, you'll get a big heal off of it. The third item that I usually take is Spirit Strike, and yes, this is something that I've started taking early, specifically because I'm in the dual lane. What Spirit Strike does is that it adds a flat damage amount to your melee, even to light melees, almost like Mystic Shot, but for your melee. But then when you do melee them, the enemies also lose Spirit Armor. And that is something that your teammates can also benefit from. When we have these three items, Monster Rounds, Melee Lifesteal, and Spirit Strike, that is also when Abrams gets his full kit online at 1500 souls, and this is typically when he starts to feel pretty strong already. I mentioned Abrams feels pretty weak at the super early game, and that's between 0 and 1500 souls, and that is because he really needs his full kit to take positive trades in the lane. You know, if you go for the stun before you get Siphon Life and you run in, people can just out-trade you after the stun, and you'll likely still die if you run it down. And if you decide to go for Siphon Life before the stun, well, then you don't have a stun to begin with, and you'll likely also get out-traded before you can get close to opponents. I think you really need your passive and your stun and Siphon Life to guarantee that you'll get out on top after a combo, and this is generally why before 1500 souls, with Abrams, we have to play a bit more passive, and then afterwards we try to play for picks with these three items. So that's our first power spike. The next power spike is then obviously at 3000 souls. The reason for this is that at 3000 souls, this is when we get our ultimate, and we can round up our laning items with three more 500 soul items, which are close quarters, sprint boots, and extra stamina. Again, close quarters speaks for itself, more damage on your melee, more damage on your shotgun, and sprint boots and extra stamina is just so that we have the option to rotate to other lanes really fast if we want to play for a pick with our ult. I've noticed that good players, especially in the dual lane, will play far back when you get ahead in souls, when you get your ult online. Everybody is very aware of the 3000 soul power spike, especially in higher elo lobbies. But if you rotate out of the lane right when you get your ult with sprint boots and extra stamina, you can usually arrive at other lanes before they expect you and get kills very easily, either using your ultimate or just your normal stun if they really don't see you coming. The thing is as well with these items is that we need sprint boots anyway for enduring speed later on. And extra stamina, I, I used to believe it was overkill, especially because I'm also taking kinetic dash still on top of that. But I still think that mobility in that lock is absolute king. And the 16% stamina recovery is very noticeable throughout the whole game. Instead of waiting 6 seconds to recharge your stamina bar, it takes about 5 seconds. That may not seem like a whole lot, I know. But combined with the extra stamina bar, this can absolutely get you out of rough spots or help you close those gaps. And it scales really well into the mid game because all that extra stamina will keep being useful. Some optional items that I have here are Restorative Shot, Extra Regen, and Reactive Barrier, which I think all speak for themselves. I usually pick up these items when I do get stuck in the solo lane against particularly difficult matchups. Reactive Barrier is mostly great against Beepop because Abrams cannot win the lane against that guy. Uh, his kit just flat out doesn't work, uh, he can just get uppercutted before the stun lands. And Extra Regen and Restorative Shot are great if you're stuck in the solo lane against a Geist or a Pocket. Somebody that you can't really outtrade that will just keep poking at you with all their abilities. Restorative shot and extra regen ensure that you at least do not die and that you make the game very boring for the opponent as well. As far as the initial ability points that you get go, uh, we still choose to upgrade our passive first. And then we can go for the stun or the siphon life first. I don't think it matters too much because as I said, in these higher level lobbies, I don't really want to engage before the 1500 soul mark, which is where I'll just have both. What I like to do is to just upgrade all my basic abilities once because all of the level one upgrades are pretty damn good. And that's it for the laning phase really, which now means we're moving into the early to mid game where we're going to continue putting a heavy emphasis on playing around our power spikes. A lot of people think about the 3000 soul power spike, but not much else. And today I want to change that. Abrams has a very strong power spike around the 9000 soul mark. And that is because if we upgrade all of our base abilities once, that is not including the ultimate, it would take us seven more ability points to fully max out our stun, which is still the route that we want to go down first. And the earliest that we can get those seven additional ability points 
is when we reach the 9,000 soul mark. Now, I'll reiterate a little bit on why the fully upgraded stun is so important. And the simple answer is, it's just damage. It essentially gives us as much weapon damage as an item like glass cannon would give us. And it just gives it for free. All we have to do is hit a target with our charge. And, and don't underestimate this. This actually gives us one of the highest weapon damage outputs in the entire game at 9,000 souls, while also, of course, still being a very tanky character. This is why Abrams is so strong early to mid game. The weapon damage you get on a stun is absolutely crazy. So let's think for a bit about how to play around this 9,000 soul power spike. Assuming that we took the six items in the lane that I previously mentioned that are now worth 3,000, that means we can spend 6,000 more souls on additional items to fully play around that power spike, which is about five tier two items. We'll need 250 souls extra to buy the last one, but in actual games, things never really line up perfectly anyway. So this is, I think, as close as we can get. And so the question then really becomes, what five tier two items can we get that will further boost this power spike even more? And in my opinion, those five items are melee charge, kinetic dash, bullet resist shredder, enduring speed, and healing booster. So again, let's now talk about the why. And first up is melee charge. In my previous guide, I mentioned that I didn't like to play with this item because it serves somewhat of the same purpose as Kinetic Dash. And I just thought at the time that Kinetic Dash was better. A better reloading perk that also gives me more mobility and more burst damage through the fire rate buff. And back then I said that there simply wasn't any space in my build for melee charge to be added to that, even though the item wasn't bad. So what's changed? Well, first up, melee charge got buffed a lot. The health bonus on it was increased, it gives passive health regen now. The extra melee damage on it especially is incredible, because much like Lucky Shot, it is counted as a critical hit. And that means that it scales multiplicatively with other melee bonus stat boosts. So yeah, in other words, it just deals a ton of damage even going into the late game. Also, the increased launch distance I found to be surprisingly strong as well. Thinking about some real world scenarios, what do players usually do after they perform a parry but they don't actually stun you with it because you didn't melee them? Well, they usually dash away. And that dash would usually be enough distance to dodge a normal heavy melee if I were to do it right after their parry. But with the 40% extra lunge distance, you can often still hit them even if they dashed away from you. On top of this, the lunge distance is also a great mobility tool if you do happen to run out of stamina. And so yes, I think melee charge is an essential item for Abrams now, or just any character that likes to have a more melee focused playstyle. And yes, in fact, melee charge is such a strong item that I think the rework to it alone, to where it now gives permanent ammo and increased damage, has caused other characters to adapt a more melee oriented playstyle. Like for example, Shiv or Mirage. All of that being said though, I still couldn't do away with Kinetic Dash. I really tried my best to put this item aside and just pass up on it because I have extra stamina now and I don't need it anymore. But I just, it just isn't working for me. Abrams is a character that doesn't have a lot of mobility right off the bat. You really need to itemize into it. And I think that Kinetic Dash has become my biggest crutch. It's more mobility, more burst DPS with your gun because you have a higher rate of fire. And together with a charged melee, you can get up to a 28 bullet magazine that refills on every heavy melee and dash jump. So I run both of these now, charge melee and kinetic dash. Bullet resist shredder is also great because it means you deal both 12% more damage with your gun and with your melee damage because bullet resistances work for the full amount on melee damage. So that is a flat 12% more damage that you're outputting on them that is technically calculated multiplicatively as well. Uh, even though it doesn't work exactly like that. And then Enduring Speed is great as it allows you to rotate around the map even faster and just be everywhere, gank players everywhere around the map. And then to round it off, we have Healing Booster because everything we do heals ourselves and this just gives us more sustain. The mid game will look a bit different for Abrams though. And this is where things start to change quite a bit, uh, both on how we play the game and how we have to think about our items. You might remember, for example, that in my previous Abrams guide, I used to max out the ultimate right after the stun, mostly because it gives me great mid-boss control. The maxed out ultimate gives you unstoppable, and in combination with your big area of effect stun that the ultimate already has, this can often steal away a mid-boss from the opponents 
for free. I quite literally have a whole library of clips where I completely changed the outcome of a game because of a mid-boss steal. And that has definitely contributed to that 60 to 75% win rate in ranked as well. You basically have the ability to single-handedly cheese out otherwise unwinnable games away from the opponents. It's one of those things where you need to be very coordinated as a team to deal with an Abrams trying to steal the crystal. And especially since ranked is still solo queue, the chances of teams being very coordinated um, is just not that great, even at the level that I'm currently playing at. So, uh, if it is so strong, what has changed? Because uh, with the build that I have right now, we are not maxing out our ultimate after the stun anymore. I know how to take a hit. Well, to be honest, I've simply noticed that if I spec into upgrading my ultimate ability first, and then still have my ultimate ability available, the players on the other team, they simply do not take mid-boss anymore, even if they have a very significant lead. And this kind of puts me in a bad spot. What you often see is that the enemy team will keep trying to bait me into fights, keep trying to bait me to use my ultimate, and then as soon as I do, they all go boss because they're so far ahead. If I don't use my ultimate in the team fights, I'm kind of griefing because I'm handicapping my team by basically not allowing myself to use my strongest ability. It's a be damned if you do, be damned if you don't situation. And so what I found a more consistent way to win games is, even when you're behind, is to just spec all your points into the passive first to just beef up myself even more. The tier 3 passive regeneration is absolutely crazy still, even after the nerfs. And if I spec into this right after the stun, I'll be able to keep that power spike that we talked about earlier for much longer, since we're able to go for aggressive ganks much later into the game, before the enemies really have the opportunity to punish us hard for it. And don't forget that we can still use our ultimate for mid-boss control, it just doesn't come with unstoppable anymore. So we're not really putting all our eggs into that one basket that early into the game. We might need a teammate to make it work. We might need uh, some additional players there to steal the mid boss crystal. You can't just do it 1v6 anymore. But also it is a team game. And in games where the enemies are smart enough to not take the crystal when I have my ultimate, I usually find myself also having teammates being smart enough to help me steal the mid boss in a competent way. And yes, you also have to accept that some games are just lost and handicapping your mid game in order to maybe get one flashy play that might just turn the game around often isn't really worth it. So what I really do in the mid game is again, I upgrade my passive and the items that I almost always take to supplement this mid game ganking type of playstyle further are Hunter's Aura, Spirit Armor, Duration Extender and Slowing Hex. Which means that in order to make this build work, we also only need one flex slot since we sell monster rounds for Hunter's Aura. But at this stage, uh, you should have at least killed three guardians, so that should not be an issue. Still though, if you find yourself ever short of a flex slot, you can always sell extra stamina to get spirit armor, and then buy point blank right after that to get the extra stamina charge back. And so this build has a lot of flexibility. And even with zero flex slots, you should be able to play it all the way through. All right, so now we've talked about the early to mid game, how to hold on to that power spike for as long as possible. But no matter what you do, it is always going to drop off as we get into the late game. And that is because of a few reasons. First up is the damage boost that you tend to get from the charge, uh, the, the maxed out stun. It is just a flat amount. So while it is very strong early on, it scales very poorly into the late game. The second issue is, is that Abrams is really, really strong versus single targets but has practically zero multi-target damage. Abrams also doesn't really have any spell damage, and, and all of this means that for larger teamfights, well, his overall damage output drops off really, really hard. The last issue that Abrams has as the game goes on is that it becomes more risky and less reliable to just run in and try to stun other players because while well, those players will have more health, they will have more damage themselves, they will have more crowd control maybe, and they will also usually stick together more so just going for ganks is not going to be as effective going into the late game. So what do we do here? Well, instead of trying to forcefully play the same way that you have been in the laning phase and the early game and the mid game, the better alternative, in my opinion, is to just make a hard transition into a full tank rule the second that you feel like you're starting to drop off. This is why this section of the build is called late game tank. Uh, instead of just going for more damage, we beef up our survivability as much as we can. And during teamfights, we just try to disrupt the enemies as much as possible and focus more on setting up kills for our team 
rather than just trying to go for kills ourselves. And with this taken in mind, the first item that I almost always buy is improved spirit armor for more survivability, followed up by our first tier 4 item, which is Colossus. So I'll touch on these a little bit. I think that improved spirit armor is a must have for Abrams late game, especially in the current meta where a lot of heroes like Infernus and Shiv and Pocket are pretty strong. Everybody likes to play Decay. Everybody likes to play Toxic Bullets. And Abrams really needs improved spirit armor just to stay alive long enough to have any real impact. And then Colossus, it is just an item practically built for Abrams. It gives you a total of over 700 health. It gives you more melee damage, more weapon damage. And whenever you're getting focused, you can just pop Colossus, which will take that spirit resist to almost 70%. And in combination with the slow that you apply around you, it makes it very difficult for players to get away from you, to stay on top of you, and to even kill you in the first place. At any point here, we can also opt to buy debuff reducer and remover, which is yet another layer of protection against the damage over time effects or crowd control effects in general. And at this point of the game, this is where you definitely want to sell the extra stamina if you hadn't already to make room for more important vitality items. Something that I also pick up a lot is bullet armor. Uh, you might think it's overkill and in some cases you're absolutely right, especially since many other items that we have already tend to give some bullet resist like point blank or life strike. But running around with 65% bullet resist, 79 when Colossus is up, that then allows you to just run into a bunch of enemies again and simply not die, which usually means that you're completely zoning them away from the fight, giving your team the extra space that they might need to fight at a temporal man advantage. With all the damage that we're taking here, we of course also want to take Berserker whenever we can. I don't like to pick this up too early anymore because usually you get the most benefit out of this item when the fight is already halfway over. But with health pools increasing into the late game and with how much damage you're going to be taking and with how cheap it becomes, um, it is an extremely strong item at this stage of the game for Abrams. And so, yeah, this is what the final build would look like when you have everything purchased on here, totaling out around 40,000 souls, which is a lot, but it's not so much that you'd never see any of this in a real game. If you look at this build, I think it's still very modest. We have a lot of tier two items in there and just one tier four item. So you should be able to work towards this in every single game that isn't a complete stomp either way. There is one section though, that is called the situational items, which you just want to pick up whenever you really need it. And yeah, the situational items, there's, there's specific use cases for them as, as the name of the section would imply. The first item on that list is without a shadow of a doubt, the refresher. Uh, and you might laugh at this, like who picks refresher on Abrams, but watch this clip and then talk to me again. It's so far away from Everyone go together, careful though. Nice. I'm running as fast as I could. Chase them. Uh, we're low, we're low. I'm Keystone. very, I'm very low, I'm very low, bro. Keystone. I'm losing blue. We need to stop overheating so much. We got a couple good trades. We need to know when to back. I don't know, guys. Yeah, we're overheating way too much. We don't need to chase like this. We, we, yeah, we, we have call to fight all of Let's go back a bit. It's okay, guys. I buy refresher and I steal the boss. Okay, in nice. Late game refresher takes away the main disadvantage of having to save your ultimate ability for boss control in that you don't have to save it for boss control. I've actually done this exact thing now about 15 times in 15 different games where we lose a late game fight but somehow I'm still alive and I use my ult in the team fight and, and, and somehow it still didn't work out, you know, bad team fights happen. I sell a bunch of my items to quickly buy refresher and then just refresh my ultimate and steal the boss to give our team yet another chance. 
Obviously, this play does waste a lot of souls, and depending on what you sell in the moment, it can make you significantly weaker for a bit. But again, Abrams isn't a late game DPS carry anyway. And yes, out of those 15 games that I've managed to do this successfully, I've only lost two of them. So the rest have just won off of this one boss pick. The enemy played it better, they won the late game team fight, and they still lose the game because Abrams bought Refresher and stole the boss away. It is very difficult to deal with. All of what I just mentioned also goes for the item Unstoppable. I've mentioned that I don't really max up my ult first anymore because, well, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. But if a game is really unwinnable and if your whole team just died and you still have your ultimate but the ultimate isn't maxed out, well, you can just sell a bunch of items, buy Unstoppable and do the usual thing. It is definitely even more all in than building your ultimate first used to be, but it's also a lot less common that you have to do this. This is only really applicable when you feel like if the enemies got boss, the game is just over and you need to do something right now. But nevertheless, this has also won me a couple of games and it still allowed me to max up my stun and my passive first, giving me as much damage and as much tankiness in the mid game as possible. Other situational items are of course Curse, Silence Cliff, Knockdown, your usual shutdown items. I even have Phantom Strike on there, which is a bit meme but it can be great if you need a long distance engage. Uh, Vampiric Burst is an item that I used to call busted on Abrams, and I still think it is. It is just that at the stage of the game where you're realistically able to buy this, you're already starting to fall off a bit. And in the higher MMR lobbies, you kind of just want to focus on setting up your team instead. Also, some of you might wonder why Warpstone is not present in this build, despite it being a core item in the last Abrams guide that I made. And well, that's simply because uh, it, it, it doesn't fit. Uh, I think Melee Charge actually gives a lot more value to Abrams now than Warpstone. Uh, I think Abrams doesn't need Warpstone per se. He kind of wants to be targeted. He wants to be in the center of the fight. He doesn't need to blink out of it. So even though it's very fun to play with Warpstone and has its use cases, I just don't really think it's something that I want to go for anymore. Uh, on that same note, I've also noticed some players go for Fleetfoot on Abrams because it allows you to heavy melee cancel, which is this thing where you use an active item just as you heavy melee to give yourself a bunch of momentum. And while I do believe that heavy melee canceling has its use cases, specifically to bait out a parry, for example, Abrams already has a way to heavy melee cancel built right into his kit, true Siphon Life, which goes on a 20 second cooldown. Pressing Siphon Life just before the melee ends also cancels the melee and gives you that same type of momentum and allows you to bait parries just as easily. And yeah, I just think that spending 1250 on an item just to do this twice uh, is taking it a bit too far and it's just not worth it in a lot of cases. It's just something fun to do if you want to mess around in lower level lobbies or if you're in some kind of griefing mood for some reason. And yeah, I think that that pretty much sums it up uh, how I like to play Abrams, what I like to build, why I do or go for certain things. Again, the whole build can be downloaded by typing this code into the search bar. And yeah, as the game goes on, as the game further evolves, I'll probably keep coming back to these guides every now and then. I do hope that this one stands the test of time a little bit more than the previous one though. Uh, I think it's time that we start playing some other characters again. We've been running it down with the blue man just a, a little bit too much. I think Mirage is probably someone that I want to start playing next. He seems very fun to play. So that's probably the next one that I'm going to cover. And uh, yeah, as always, I want to thank you for watching and you will see me very soon.